album title is finally in our vision. We, we finally did it. We're here. We qualified for money in the bank. It's a great day to be a Rollins fan. Plus, another superstar qualifies for the men's money in the bank. The women's field is shaping up, and we have some new debuts, and apparently having three DUIs not only means that you can kick off SmackDown, but it also means that you're still on top storyline. We logic, my friends. All that more is we dissect last night's Friday Night SmackDown, which is the last SmackDown of the pandemic era because next week is the return of fans. Welcome to a brand new episode of Kimmy Talk Wrestling, and we are starting. post-pandemic era. Fans are coming back next week. That means no piping chance. Roman's not going to get booed. We're living a good life. But we gotta start from the beginning. So SmackDown started with Jimmy Uso. So if you have basically lived underneath the rock or didn't see the news, uh, earlier this week Jimmy Uso actually got arrested for a DUI. Shocking that he was able to start off the show. But he starts off the show and he wants to be with Roman and then Paul's like, oh, you'll see him. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Then Roman comes out and he calls out Edge and he says, you know, it doesn't matter what you did to my family. Like, I'm going to beat you anyway. Like, it's just going to be a repeat of mania. We you know, look at what happened. Pin them, stack them, made a t-shirt about it. We made great sales. Then Jimmy comes out and Jimmy goes, oh, I was doing this for us. You know, I was defending our honor. And Reigns is like, well, I was on vacation, and I was doing something you couldn't, so Jey Uso's back, and the bloodline is reunited, they're focused on the tag team titles, Reigns is going to go defend his title, be successful. Pretty shocked that he was allowed on SmackDown, but, you know, this is the most pivotal story, and it's not the last time we see this, or Edge putting chairs into Uso's faces, and, you know, doing that whole thing. But this was fine, I mean, good way to start. Recap from last week. This is good. You know what else was good? Our three, well, technically two debuts and an announcement. So, we had Natty and Tamina facing two competitors that we never seen on WWE TV before, and it was Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox, who is also now known as Shotzi and Knox. Don't know why we took Tegan away, but okay, thanks, WWE. This match was really good. Shotzi mostly did. Most of the work because this was Tegan's first televised match since her injury, so that was expected. And they won! They beat Natty. So I'm excited that we're calling people up, especially because you know the fact that the division is this big. But, um, kind of confused why we kept Ember down there and why didn't we just call Shotzi, Ember, and Tegan up? But maybe Ember's gonna go back on Raw. Maybe she could just stay in NXT? I don't know. But this is really good. This is really exciting. And I'm assuming that at Money in the Bank that this tag team match is going to happen and Shotzi and Tegan are going to win. But with another announcement, the blue brand is going to become Tony time because Tony Storm is debuting soon as well. I'm assuming this is actually going to happen right after Money in the Bank. So like the first SmackDown after. I don't know where it is. But that SmackDown is where she's going to debut, which is super exciting too. Things are looking up in the women's division after the shocking news we heard in the afternoon because after practicing in the PC, Bailey has torn her ACL so she cannot wrestle Bianca at Money in the Bank. So what they did was that she's wrestling Carmella next week, Bianca, for the title and then Liv took Carmella's spot in the Money in the Bank. So there's one more spot left in the women's field. But I'm going to assume that this is either where Becky returns to face Bianca and Becky wins the title and then Sasha is the last entrant in the Money in the Bank or vice versa where Sasha beats up Carmella then it's Sasha and Bianca part two and then Becky is that last entrant in the Money in the Bank. I said this months ago I believe that Becky is going to return next Friday in some sort of capacity. They had already announced Sasha back a couple months ago when the tickets were on sale so I don't know what capacity she's going to be involved in but I find it very intriguing that's on a Friday and not at Money in the Bank. So I'm assuming that either Sasha or Becky are going to come 
And if Becky doesn't come, I don't know when she's returning because I'm assuming that she's dressing at SummerSlam. So, like, when's that gonna happen? Unless she comes back someday. She might come back on Money in the Bank. But that's my bold prediction, is that she's going to come back next Friday. And speaking of Becky, well, no, we'll talk about Nakamura first, I've got the wrongs. So, it was Nakamura and King Corbin for the seventh spot in the Money in the Bank. And Nakamura won. So, Bar Baron is just, he has a rough life. You know, he lost his car, he's losing his house. He lost his crown, he's becoming poor, I'm very intrigued to see well, where we're going with this. So Nakamura won, and I think that was the right, I mean, it was the right choice, because I feel like looking at the field, there's enough veterans and enough like superstars that need that opportunity, which is really good, but I won't, and the match was good too, and <laughs> Big E, so this is the other thing they did, like for both qualifying matches, they had two superstars already qualified, so Owens was there for Rollins, and Big E was there for Nakamura and Corbin, and Big E and Pat were like sitting on the couch, and they were like getting pedic- like they were like- it's not like a pedicure, but it's like where you put your feet in like the water. Like that's what they were doing, and it was just so funny. And Pat's like- and like Pat was doing commentary, literally had a mic piece in his ear, and he's like on the microphone, it was so funny. But Nakamura wins, right decision, but- <laughs> Embracing our vision towards that title, I see, because Rollins won. Rollins won. Here we go, two times. So my bold prediction is actually Rollins is gonna win the Money in the Bank, and I'm not being biased with this. I feel like it kind of makes sense, and I'll get into that when I get into Money in the Bank predictions next week. But Rollins beat Cesaro. Cesaro actually got busted open, I think, from the turnbuckle, and it was really bad. And I was like, wow. <laughs> but Rollins won. I'm excited that he won. He has new gear. He has her rock and silver and black now, which that that's good. Hopefully the Young Bucks don't copy it. But this was good. The match was good. Um, Rollins' tantrums were good. Owens on commentary was really funny too because Owens was just like, oh yeah, this tantrum's really gonna help you. Rollins, like, what are you doing? But I'm excited for this. So we have a really good field. So actually next week all four SmackDown competitors are gonna be in a field of four. So it's gonna be Rollins, Owens, Big E, and Nakamura. And they're doing the same thing on Raw with the woman. So it's Cross slash Ash, Naomi, Asuka, and Alexa. But remember, there's one spot on the woman. And then, oh my god, we're doing it. We're doing Edge and Rollins at SummerSlam. Because Rollins was celebrating that he won. And Edge comes in, and Edge is like, you know, I was wondering where the winding was coming from. And it looks like you haven't changed since 2014. Because remember, he tried to break Edge's neck in 2014 on the last Raw in 2014. And he was like, you know, I'm going to do something that you can't do. Which is call Roman out. And he goes. So that's my prediction, is that Rollins is actually going to cash in in this match at Screw Edge. That's my prediction, that's my bold prediction. I think it's going to happen, I think it makes sense, and oh my god, I hope it does. So now Edge, Edge goes out there, and Edge is just like, talking about how he deserves the title. And Edge and Reigns square down, and Reigns didn't want the Usos to come out, and basically they're like beating each other up and then the Usos come out and basically it's the same thing where they do the chair thing like they take the bottom of the chair and just like do the cross face with it so it looks like that's what we're doing so intrigued but I'm gonna R Rollins interfering in that match one way or another whether he went to money in the bank or not and that makes me really excited the fact that was good I think this was a good way to end the pre pan well end the pandemic era and go into post pandemic. I'm excited to see fans next week and not screens. And yeah, so make sure you like this video, comment what y'all thought about SmackDown. And I'll see y'all Monday Tuesday with our raw review. Which should be really interesting because it's raw. <laughs>